we will now look at the recycling process. For this, we have broken down the recycling process into 10 easy steps. By going through these steps, you will understand how a carefully considered design decision can make a big difference, ensuring recycling can be done effectively, both in terms of its economic viability and, of course, its environmental impact. In short, these steps will be, first, the transportation of the product, second, extract the parts which can be reused, third, separate those parts which are already in a decent quality, feed the rest into the deeper recycling process will be the next step, and the fifth step, shred everything. Next step will be to classify it, and afterwards we have to sort it. At the eighth point, we have to extract suitable materials out of the pr process and then, if possible, in the next step, restart this process from step five as long as it is economically feasible. Finally, step 10, burn or dispose of the rest. Let's now have a look at each of these steps in more detail. The first step, transportation of the products to the recycling plant. First of all, the product must be transported to the recycling plant, where the product and its constituent materials can be managed. This will generate costs in energy, of course. The second step, extract the parts which can be reused. In this step, the product will be checked for well-functioning parts. If these parts are easy to dismantle from the main product, then they can fulfill their designated task in either a similar or a different product. In the case where they no longer work as needed, they can be remanufactured. But remember, this will only be done if it is profitable to dismantle this single part from the main product. Depending on the part, and its connections to the main product, this step will provide more or less value in the process. The easier it is to remove these working components and their higher value of the part in the overall product, the higher the chances they will actually be removed and reused or remanufactured. The third step, separate those parts which are already of a decent quality. If possible, you can pick out the single parts that are easy to remantle and feed them into the right process to manufacture new products out of them. These parts could be, for example, housings and casings made out of plastic or aluminium, pure copper wires or steel parts such as screws, which are only used to connect other components. If these parts are excluded from the rest of the process, it will not only retain a lot of the components value and save money in the remanufacturing process, it will also help all downstream processes. The fourth step, feed the rest into the deeper recycling process. The residual parts of the product, the ones which are not easy to reuse or remanufacture as they are, will now be fed into the recycling process. The aim of this process is to separate or liberate as many different materials as possible. At this point, all these materials are still joined or linked to each other. And a lot of energy will be needed to break these connections. The fifth step, shred everything. In most cases, the material will now be shredded. This will reduce the size of the parts by hopefully break the joints and will therefore separate the material from each other. This operation is crucial for the following steps. Occasionally, this process will connect different materials through bending or pressing. Some material connections are so complex that it will not be possible to separate them in one go. The sixth step. The shredded material will be classified. Classifying 
the output of the shredder is necessary. It will divide this output into material mix, mix which can be processed during the following sorting phase. Mostly, the output is classified by particle size. At the end of this process, there will be at least two different classes which can be distinguished in at least one dimension. The seventh step. These material flows will be sorted and or classified again. Each class now needs to be sorted. This could happen by density with a magnetic or electric field or by using other physical or mechanical characteristics of the material we want to separate. The chosen mechanism depends on the material mix. Ferrous materials are easy to separate from aluminium by using a magnetic field, for example. But if they are trying to separate aluminium from a mix of polymers, then the magnetic field is not the right mechanism to choose. The eighth step. Extract suitable materials out of the process. In the stage of the process, we could separate materials which fulfill all requirements of a certain manufacturing process. These materials can therefore be fed into a new process. At this point in the process, a lot of effort and energy has already gone into the extracting the, these materials. Depending on which material we are extracting, this process might be economically justifiable or not. Materials which are lower cost to obtain from primary sources, for example through mining, makes the material recycling process less valuable, as the price of the recycled material is already relatively low. For example, materials which are precious, rarely found on Earth, or simply hard to access in their primary source, we can justify putting even more effort in the recycling process, as the materials we will be extracting are very, very valuable. The ninth, the ninth step, restart this process from step five for as long at, as it is economically feasible. In many cases, as the ones I just described, the high value of the material will justify additional recycling effort. With every repetition of step 5 to 8, the particles will become smaller and smaller. In most cases, the separation of smaller parts requires a different machine from the one used before. In all cases, the cost of each repetition will add up to the total price of the recycled material. Certain processes will be more expensive due to the fact that more and more complex machines and processes are needed to sort and separate the shredded materials. The tenth and last step. Everything else will be used to generate energy or will be transported to a landfill. In the end, material mixes that do not carry enough value to justify further processing will be either burned or transported to a landfill. In case of incineration, there may be some energy generated out of the process, but materials that end up in a landfill are unlikely ever to be used again. These materials will most likely stay there for a very long time. These materials are therefore lost unless it someday becomes economically possible to dig them out and reprocess them. Both Incineration or landfilling is something we, as designers and engineers, must truly try to avoid. <laughs>